Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about a question that a subscriber asked. So, you know, long time subscriber here. So big shout out to you and thanks for asking. Uh, how differently uh, is data science and traditional statistics degrees are seen in the industry? Uh, are they considered close to each other? Right, trying to figure this out here. I'll give you my perspective here. I'm a little bit of a ranting mood. I just shot a different video. Um, <laughs> let's dive into this here. So traditional stats versus data science. What do I see? What do I like? What is the industry doing? From an industry perspective here, uh, I see a lot of banks, a lot of it, investment firms, for example, hedge funds, trading institutions, investment banks, things like that. A lot of people are very excited. They're very curious. I see a lot of overhype just like everywhere else. Okay. So I see people running out, hiring them, thinking they're going to solve all their problems because AI, data science, and machine learning is magical. I see people writing papers on finance, applying the most rudimentary concepts. Which I'm not even going to go into details because it'll probably call a few people out. Um, but again, they're just doing what we've all known for years. So not a lot of a surprise there. Um, yes, there's a lot of hype in the industry. There are a few larger, big name global banks that are hiring data science teams. Um, I've seen and talked to people in data science teams in general. Um, I don't know if banks are happy with them, what they're getting from them. Uh, but again, banks are happy, excited, they're hiring all these people. So yes, banks see this, they will hire you a lot of times. But again, who will hire and who won't hire, I'm not really sure. So. It's a positive thing for some bigger banks. If you want to do a data science degree and get into quant finance, I don't think you're going to be qualified to do it, um, but go for it. Like dive in, look for these teams. If the team's specifically hiring data science, they might tailor the job specifically towards your skill set so you wouldn't need a lot of the other skills. Um, now, my perspective on data science versus statistics degrees. So again, here I'm talking at a mastery level. Quant finance has a minimum requirement in the United States that you must have a minimum of a master's degree. So I'm only talking master's and PhDs. Um, I've worked with a few people with data science backgrounds. I've talked to people in the industry that have worked with other people. Um, I've talked to people in the industry that have data science degrees. Um, I've interviewed a bunch of people with data science degrees. I just don't see the rigor, to be honest with you. Um, so finance as a whole is mainly focusing on statistical modeling. That's where we make the money. That's how the banks operate. That's how these investing firms are operating. So even though there's a lot of funds or firms or trading institutions that are touting great results and magical miracle trading profits, uh, a lot of these have like a small piece that's doing machine learning and then there's another bigger piece, which is like doing traditional statistics and then a bigger, bigger piece just doing like diversification um, or just being stored in other really, really safe manners. So you have to think about that in comparison in size, right? A lot of the heavy lifting and the basically the alpha, right, you're seeking here, that edge uh, is coming from statistical models. Yes, machine learning and data science are trying to do things, but I have not seen any significant impacts within the trading realm. So I just don't see it on the trading side. Again, I don't work on the trading side, so there might be stuff out there. If there is, like seriously, put a link below. I know Lopez de Prado has been writing books and whatnot, but again, I haven't seen any hard evidence and proof on what are the actual impacts, what are the outcomes. Again, they're not gonna tell you their methods. I understand that, because uh, they're proprietary. But again, I wanna see the fund's performance. I wanna see an actual fund, and I don't wanna see one year's of returns. I don't wanna see two years returns. I don't wanna see five year returns. I wanna see 10, 15, 20 years returns, okay? Right, you get lucky for a few years. It's, it happens in finance, um, but stats degrees in general are just—they're more based on what we do on a daily basis. So I'm not saying a data science degree is not a good degree, but the people I've interviewed, I've worked with, I've talked to, for data science, they're just fitting curves and fitting charts. So categorization, for example, right, decision trees, stuff like that. It's not really doing a lot of advantages over traditional statistical modeling. So the vast majority of the jobs I don't see changing. Um, yeah, there are new tools that we can learn, but again, if you have a really strong math and stats background, data science is realistically just built on top of that. And I think one of the issues I have is that a lot of the master's programs all over the world, including the US, um, they focus too much on the application, like how do you apply this, how do you implement this, instead of on the theory and the rigor behind it. And I've seen comments that are just stupid comments I'm gonna throw out there right now that, you know, I don't need to know the math. I just run this code and it works. Okay, well, let me tell you from someone who does time series, 
the tools that you have in R and Python aren't as good as what we use professionally in SaaS. So I'm just going to throw that out there, right? They're not as good. You can't do as much with them. Now, you could hard code it and redesign it and do all this stuff and it's open source and yada, yada, yada. I don't want to spend all that time doing that. So it doesn't add a lot of value to most people. Uh, most data scientists, again, are going to utilize the pre-built packages and some of them are okay and some of them do good things and a lot of them are basic, which is fine. But a lot of times you miss the intricate details in some of these functionalities that you really, really need. Okay, so I know people are going to be offended probably by that as well. And again, when you create these money-making data science masters, which I think most schools are doing for the money, not for the education, you learn how to implement them, but you don't learn the math. When you have people like me and you're dealing with multi-million dollar models, so yes, people pay millions of dollars for a model in banking and finance and investing because um, they make that much money and profit for you. Uh, just throwing somebody in with a generic understanding and implementing things is super, super dangerous. I think it's vastly irresponsible in general. If you want to do it in a situation where you don't have a lot of financial impact or consumer impact or customer impact or like, I don't know, societal impact, like go for it. Uh, but I just don't see it. Now, if you got a really good data science degree with a solid stats and math background, like, like we're interviewing these people, right? Companies are interviewing them. We're trying to find someone good that has a different approach and different perspective. So it's definitely out there. It's something to look at. But from my consideration, I've interviewed people the PhDs, for example, that were supposed to be like top notch, um, their peers, and I said they were like awesome, all stars. Uh, I've interviewed them. I've tried to make them walk me through the math and the theory. And while I understand it, if you can't even explain it and walk me through it, there's no way I'm going to hire you, right? Again, I'm not doing the hiring, but when I put input in on these and company people from different companies will call and ask and say, hey, I'm looking at this candidate. Um, what questions would you ask on this interview? Or like, I don't know, what are your opinions? What are your thoughts? So I have impact in different areas. Um, I'll give them examples that they can use that are pretty simple and straightforward. And yes, people with PhDs, so top rated masters, for example, a lot of times they can't solve them. Um, and I should note too, when I interview or I give people questions, right? The goal of the question is not to get the question right. The goal of the question is to have a intellectual stimulating conversation. So if you can only go part way, like I'm trying to work with you and throw you a bone here, right? Like, hey, like you're stuck here. Like, what about this? And like, I'm trying to get you to think through it and talk to me about the process. Um, I just don't see this a lot with data science degrees. And I know it's going to offend a lot of people. And I do see a lot of value in data science. And I will point out a few examples here at the end. Um, so a few examples of data science that I have seen in banking that have done pretty good. Um, so fraud, fraud and banking, data science can catch these patterns very quickly. But again, that's what data science is made for is essentially categorization, catching off patterns. Um, and then also I'm seeing across the industry, talking to different colleagues, uh, gradient boosting has done pretty well for a lot of different credit risk applications. So if we can push it, we can get more from it. That's awesome. But again, in banking, the standards are so high. We need to make sure these are done correctly. There are standards in place. There are rules. There are logic. There's a lot of academic rigor behind it. It's not just blindly throwing stuff in. And I'll finish this off with the one thing that I can't stand more than anything, which is I see way too much maximization of R squared or adjusted R squared. This just makes you incompetent. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Don't do stupid things like this. I see this constantly. It irritates me to no end. Um, I go back to these models. And I go, well, explain these variables. They don't know. Oh, they, do. they, they start coming up with nonsensical crap. So I have experience dealing with these types of people. I have a business background. Yes, I can come up with any rationale for you that makes logical sense, but it doesn't really make sense. Um, trying to maximize your fit is ridiculous. You need to have logic and understanding and we're trying to get an approximation to reality knowing we'll never actually calculate it. So we'll never get to that final solution. Um, but we're just trying to get an approximation. But you need logic, logic, logic. Things need to make sense on a business side, finance, economical side, right? And they also need to make sense on a statistical, theoretical driven approach. You can't just throw stuff in and hope stuff comes out. So anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. Data science masters, I think they add a lot of value. Banks are hiring them. I think there's some potential in the banking industry. But if you're going to go that route, make sure your electives are going to be crucial in statistics and math because it's such a, I don't know, groundbreaking fundamental foundation. If you don't have it, you're really just a button pusher pushing code in and out and not really understanding what's going on, which I think is pretty sad. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.